welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy and RJ is at a roping. <laughs> so he won't be here today. But we're going to kind of go with the old format. And we are going with in the chapel. It is Proverbs 418. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the day is full. So, um, yep, I just keep plucking away. Let's put it that way. <laughs> So, we are making some progress, but it's winter, so progress is kind of slow around here. Um, Alright, in the barn stalls, honestly, not a whole lot going on, other than my computer is not um, cooperating. <laughs> so, okay, I got it, I think. <coughs> um, the first snow came to the farm of 2020. Um the snow was not the problem problem is is that friday we got about six inches of rain in two hours everything flooded i tried to get it you know it's the prairie there's not a whole lot for it to drain so we do have a system in place and some of it just got overflowed you know we use hay so the hay kind of clogs up some of the stuff but um i couldn't get the water moving off fast enough and then the temperature started to drop so, pretty much the entire pasture was like a big ice skating rink. Um, we had to go move some cattle, the pigs, um, just, it is what it is. It floods every year and we're used to that, but um, when it started to freeze, it gave us, you know, a little bit of a problem. And then, of course, here came the snow on top of that. Um, today, it's supposed to be 50, though, so... Yeah, and that happened Friday, Saturday. This is Sunday. It's supposed to be 50, and it's gone. <laughs> so, welcome to Oklahoma. <laughs> so, that was our biggest feat, just pretty much moving things around, keeping everything safe, putting up with two dogs. Mm-hmm. That um, Randall does not like snow, just like RJ. Uh, he's actually had some accidents on the floor that I've had to clean up because he doesn't want to go out and go potty. Like, I'll take him out, but he won't go potty. And I made him stay out there the other day. Um, I guess it was yesterday. And he absolutely would not poop at all. It's a good thing we have a concrete floor. Remember, we've got the one stall that we've built into the house. It's not a big deal. I just hate cleaning it up. And he knows better. Um, but he would not, he did not want to squat in the snow. It's kind of funny to watch, but it's not funny. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it is funny. So anyway, that's where Randall's at. Um, Moose got his shots, and we are now, now the problem with Moose is Moose does not like to be touched, so it takes an act of Congress to pretty much, he'll go to the vet, the vet can't touch him, so how do you vaccinate him? And he tries to bite, and muzzles are now considered inhumane, but I do think is a tool that they have a reason, and I don't own one. So we got tricky with it, and I... He sleeps underneath blankets, so I took a blanket, I wrapped it like really thick around his head and tucked his head up underneath here and was acting like I was loving on him and the vet came in and just was quick as could be. So yeah, he is official again. It took us a little bit of doing and I love this thing. We got this little um, clip-on thing from Elizabeth in Canada. And this little thing is amazing. It's got a little reflector on it, and we've always used it. I don't know where she got it, but I'm going to find some more because um, Randall now needs one, and I'm not willing to give him mooses. But it clips onto whatever you need it to clip onto. Because moose is so short with his harness, this drags the ground. He's just really short. So <coughs> I put it on his leash, but he goes everywhere with me. He's in the car with me all the time. He just does not like to be touched, and he will bite if you touch him. Um, you can already lets him out to go potty. Um, I can touch him. He's my dog, but he does not like to be touched. He's just like a hands-off dog. Um, I can take him everywhere with me and people will say, oh, can I pet your dog? No, he bites. And I'll tell him flat out, he does not like to be touched. And I've had people say, oh, he's such a pretty thing though. And I'm like, yeah, he's pretty, but with an attitude. Um, RJ can let him out, let him in, put him in his kennel, feed him, water him, whatever he needs to do. Um, he just can't touch him. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of times he's got a collar on um, in case RJ has to reach down and just clip on the um, leash. 
but when he goes with me, he's got a halter and I've got this thing that clicks into the car because honestly, if I was ever in a car wreck, um, I can't have him get loose. I know I hear stories all the time about that. There's just different precautions that we take and it is a big deal for him to have his shots and he was late getting his shots because he didn't want the vet to touch him and I had to come up with a better plan because they have done away with the muzzle because they said it was, people were saying it was inhumane. Um, the vet didn't muzzle every dog, but my dog is one that needed to be muzzled. Um, if you remember back when Moose got fixed, the funny story was is that they had to sneak up on him and give him the injection to put him to sleep so that he could go into surgery. And the next morning I had a call, apparently he wouldn't let them in the kennel and the um, they couldn't clean it, they couldn't do anything, they couldn't check his incision, nothing. And they called me and said, can you come first thing in the morning? I wasn't supposed to pick him up till noon. And I said, sure, I, I don't understand the problem. She says, we just can't touch him. And I was like, oh no, because I thought with me gone, somebody could touch him. No, it's not whether I'm there and it's just me. He just does not like people touching him at all. So um, I had to go and get him in the little vet assistant she was left she says he's like Jekyll and Hyde when you're gone he is a vicious mean dog and she said but when you're here he just turns into this lovey little puppy she says I don't get it and I was like I don't get it either but it is the way it is so I had to bathe him and show him the incision and all this stuff they're at the vet and they're like take him home just get him out of here just go so giving him his shots is always an adventure and he has to do it once a year so, yeah, we were about six months late getting it done because he just, I don't know. He's just moose. He's spoiled. <laughs> That's what RJ says anyway. <coughs> so, anyway, um, so that's kind of all that's really been going on in the barn salts. Randall, this one, moose, um, that's about it. Uh, just dealing with the weather. So, um, which is a good thing. I mean, it keeps us busy. Uh, RJ's dealing with the weather at his uncle's house and been running uh, cattle, doing all the cattle stuff up there for him while he's out of town. Um, it's okay. It, it just is, it is what it is. And like I said, it's a couple of days and then it gets nice again. So, yep. Mother Nature flipped the heater back on today. <laughs> all right. Let's see. What else? Um, mending fences. There are a lot of things that we're working on. We're just doing maintenance right now. Uh, it all stopped with the bad weather, but um, some of the stalls got clean, some of the stalls. And when I say clean, I mean take the tractor and level it. it I mean major cleaning overhaul. Uh, and then we were working to maintain some of them. We use that corrugated plastic, and over time it just kind of gets pulled away. And I got, went and got big nails and all that stuff, so that's a good thing. Um, just stuff like that. Uh, let's see anything else I don't think oh yeah the truck um, just got the truck back Thursday and it needed a new water pump so it has a new water pump <laughs> but <coughs> that's okay we're cool with it you know a little maintaining to ever hurt anything uh, other than that I don't think we've had to fix on I mean just maintenance just maintenance going on. It's winter, and that's what we do in the winter. So, moving on to in the yarn farm. I actually have some wonderful stuff that I've been working on. If you remember, I made... Sorry about the crinkle. Okay, so I made these mitts, and I wanted to make a hat with them. I haven't used them yet. Um, because I don't want them to fade any more than the other. So I have decided, um, and that I am just doing this, and I just pulled a little bit of this out. I didn't mean to, but anyway, so this is going to be the hat, and it's going to be really, really simple, really, really basic, um, and it honestly is just going to be a square, and then I'm going, it, this is going to cuff up, and I'm going to gather this up here so it's just going to be a basic simple uh, beanie type hat <coughs> and then whatever's left i probably will make a cowl or a scarf out of um i bought this big 
thing here. I got it on sale, so I was good with it. And it's, let's see here. I don't even know what size hook this is that I'm using. I just grabbed it. It's my favorite hook. So it's a five millimeter. Just saying. So, ah, 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 ah. Randall. Yeah, and I have stuff on the bench, and Randall can reach it. There went Moose's stuff. He likes to do that. So, there's that that I'm working on, and that I'm going to actually take to work with me because I can work on it when we're not doing anything. Uh, in the evenings, mostly. Uh, I also finished the four ounces that I had of the white. If you remember a couple of um, podcasts ago. Hey, guys, come on now. Hey! Randall, get down! He's like a maniac right now. So anyway, I got 318 yards uh, two ply, and it worked up really nice. I have not soaked it to set the twist yet. Um, I wanted y'all to see it before I got it wet. It would take longer to dry because of the weather and that we don't have central heat in there. So the other one, now that one was great. The other one, I said I was going to stick it. Uh, I'm not knocking it, and I'm not even going to tell you where I got it. But, I mean, y'all know I got it at a store, but I'm not going to remind you who I got it from. I got this beautiful bat, and it looks good, right? The problem is, is that it is, and I don't know what this sparkle stuff is. We use um, what's called Aurora, and it is clear and takes on whatever color. It gives a little sparkle to whatever color you put it with. This is called Sparkle. And... I, I don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to put it out there. This is part of the bat, okay? And this sparkle stuff, I'm hoping I can find a place. You probably can see it on the bobbin. If you look, the sparkle sticks out. It doesn't spin in. And so I've got all these little sticky out prongy things. See how it's doing? Yeah. And I've tried putting extra twists in it. I'm not impressed. Um, I will probably never buy anything with something that says sparkle again. Um, or glitz. Glitz was the other word on there. Um, it says glitz and sparkle. Don't know what that means, but I probably won't do it again. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the other problem that I'm having with this bat, and I'm sitting here, I have to, um, it's got glumps like spots where there's just sparkle um it's not carded through the whole thing very lightly it seems like there's little globs of it and it makes it not spin so i have to pull them out and stop uh and the final thing that i'm not really happy with see here's another piece of sparkle i don't know what it is but it doesn't lay flat or it doesn't i wasn't impressed with all the nibs that are in this um these little short second cuts and if you notice this is not spinning as smooth see there's nibs and it's going to be a textured um yarn as opposed to my nice smooth one so here's the problem i bought them to use together uh I wanted to make a two-tone. I am not one to use a textured yarn with a smooth one. I don't like the look, and it's an issue. So I will, I'm going to spin them up. I'm not going to say anything more. I mean, I just wasn't impressed with the bat, especially for the price that I paid. Um, if you're going to pay high dollar, and inside what they had done is they rolled it in a way that it, it looked the best and it looked smooth. But when you opened it up on the inside, it wasn't as smooth. So, hey, 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 guys, that's enough. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't as impressed with the bat as I could feel it. And it's, it's not as soft as the other one either, which I knew. But I thought that I could do it like stripes and, and place the stripes so that the cuffs where it's real tight towards you or whatever I made with it wouldn't um, 
and I knew what I wanted to make with it. That's the thing. And I was going to do it striped, but I was going to end so that the cuffs were the smooth one, the, the not so itchy one. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen because I just, I don't know. I don't want the textured with the smooth. I just don't think it makes for a very nice look. And what I was going to do is do a big square that's striped and have it um, have sleeves, you know, just so you put your arms through and then it just covers your back. I don't know what to call it, a chalet, a wrap. I, I don't know. I just had this thing in my head and I was going to make it. And <coughs> I'm going to say probably not now. Um, I'll have to find a different yarn to do it with. Uh, it is what it is. So, yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have in the yarn farm, really. Um, I don't know what comes next, but we're going to move on into in the fields because that is where it took some doing because it would rain and then it quit and it rained and it quit and the pasture was soaked anyway. That's why the six inches of rain was just too much because the pasture was already saturated. But the frame, the trusses, and everything is here for the tiny house. So it's sitting in the big barn and we have all the wood. Once the wood is put up, um, we have to pick a time to have it put up and I need a week where it's gonna be dry because we'll have, it'll take two days to get it framed up. Um, and then we'll order the metal and get the metal up. So yeah, if I get can get the weather to cooperate and get someone to help me, uh, we're going to have it framed and up, and then we start the fun stuff. Um, pretty much you're just going to see a metal building, and then each wall is going to be amazing. It, it just, to watch the whole thing go in, I'm building everything from the kitchen sink, the, the counters, um, the shower. I already have the shower head. Um, we're, I'm just super excited. I just wish, I wish the shell was already up. But it's not. So it's getting there, though. It's going to get there. Progress. 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 Slow and steady wins the race. So um, it was one of my goals to have it up and be working on it by the end of last year. Things didn't work out the way we had hoped. But it's coming this year. 2020 is going to be amazing. So, um, And we're hoping to do some videos of those. So you might watch for those. And if you've noticed, we've kind of started putting in... Not just the podcast stuff, but just some other little stuff like RJ dealing with bloat. Um, we know that some homesteaders still watch this. And if you have a cattle that bloats, that was something that they can do without major vet. Um, so, uh, anyway. So, and then, of course, we did a star update. Um, horses are coming along. I think we've got nine out here right now. That's a lot for us. Um Two of them are not ours. So, and whiskey. Oh my gosh, I forgot to do a whiskey update. Okay, so we're gonna backtrack. Sorry. Whiskey is making one heck of a barrel horse from what we understand. Um, we saw some video of her. She's done exhibition already, and they say she seems to want the barrels. She doesn't have any interest in cows. We will not force a horse to do something they don't like to do. She had no interest in it. She didn't want to do it. She saw a cow, she walked the other way. One of the things that we look for when we turn them loose in the pasture and know that they're gonna really make a good uh, calf horse is they will actually go and track the calves after they've learned to track. Um, if you turn them out in the pasture, they'll just track on their own. That's one thing that they'll do that they just think is fun. They, it, it's a game to them after that. So she didn't do any of that. She's like, I'm not playing that game. If you're not going to force me, I'm not playing it. So she doesn't track cattle. She doesn't want anything to do with cattle. But apparently, burning barrels is her thing. So we might be kind of in the business of a barrel horse. <laughs> I'm not big on barrels, but, you know, I guess if she's going to want to run barrels, I better be getting a little bit better on barrels. Scary, huh? Um, okay, <coughs> back to where we were. Um, so the tiny house is coming along. It's just slower progress than what we'd hoped, which I'm sure if any of you all have lived any amount of time, you know that nothing ever happens on the timeline that you want. It always happens as it happens. It's called life. 
but I wish it would happen at my time frame. So, all right, moving on into the farmhouse. Now, I do have one thing, and somebody kind of probably saw the thing. We got mail. We got mail. <laughs> I feel like RJ. We got mail. Um, he used to do Blue's Clues. He used to watch it. So, yeah. Okay, so we got surprise mail um, from Canada. So, Elizabeth, uh, she sent us a little note, and it actually came after Christmas. And it was kind of funny because she sent me, she says, did you check your mail? And I had been gone a couple of days, and I was like, uh, no, I'll check it when I get home, though. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, we got a lovely, it says, to the Straw Family Farm. It, it's a cute little um, card here. I have it sideways. It won't fit. There, okay. But anyway, I don't know. It looks good always, to be honest with you. It does. So anyway, it's a Christmas little postcard. It says, to the Straw family, a special gift for you from the SPCA elves, a.k.a. Roger, Elizabeth, and of course, B. Merry Christmas. So, B is the cat. Um, she's amazing. I love that cat. Anyway, so we got a 2020 calendar with animals. And I'm just going to show you the back because it, I'm not going to flip through all of them. I don't know if you can kind of see. There's cats and dogs alike. And these calendars, I love them because it gives you the name. Of, and this is just tracker. And then it gives you a little bit, a little tidbit down here. Um, and each month is different. So this is Willow. Um, she gave me one of these last year, and I used it all year. I love these calendars. So, um, it is truly after my heart. Um, I know everybody's going to ask me which was my favorite, and I have to tell you, okay, and, and there's a reason that it's my favorite, okay, and it's because you guys couldn't really see it. There's only one that's not a cat and a dog, um, and it's my favorite just because they're not a cat and a dog. Um, well, I know there's two, actually, and the other one, yeah, this one you'll understand why. Mm, yeah, that's my favorite. Now, the other one that's not a cat and a dog, let me go back, because there is another one, and it's not a kitty cat or a puppy dog, but it's Turbo. I'm not a big rabbit fan. Uh, it's not that I'm not a big rabbit fan. We've rehomed them. We've housed them here. <coughs> We rescued, I think, three out of the Joplin. They didn't have any place to go with it, and they're only licensed for cat and dog. Um, so, yeah, we've taken them, and we've rehomed them and found them homes. But they're not my favorite animal. And if I have to choose, that donkey picture is just too funny. I'm sorry. I love it. So, anyway, we got that mail. RJ's been roping and, and working for his uncle. I've been working. Um... There's really not a whole lot going on just because of the weather. Um, I made a big old pot of hamburger soup and just chores around here, keeping the wood fire going. Um, that's about it. Uh, other than that, everything is doing really well and just braving the cold. So we're hoping, uh, Gordy did stand out in the rain on Friday so RJ is watching him like a hawk. He got a little bit of scours, um, but yeah, nothing major, major. So I know that's going to make this kind of a short podcast because none of his shenanigans. <laughs> um, but yeah, we took down Christmas. Um, really, not a whole lot. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this week. Um, RJ's going to try making some little clips outside. We're trying to get back to doing that every once in a while so that people actually see the animals instead of just hearing about them. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. So, with the weather being what it is, our batteries on our phone go dead. It's hard to get a lot done. Um, and as you saw from that little clip that RJ did, it's hard for him to actually work the cattle do that and videotape but he tries and anytime there's something that people need to know or want to know you know we, we try to to include that so 
<coughs> anyway, I still have a little cough from being, I know that the other week I was kind of croupy, but I have a little cough, a little drainage, but I'm doing good. So I can taste my food again, my coffee again. <laughs> All right, I think that's about it. I will let you know what I decide to make with these two yarns because obviously they're not going to work together. And that's one reason I hate buying bats. I mean, it's, I make my own bats and I love my own bats, but there's a lot that can be hidden inside the bat and the way they tie it, you can't untie it and see it and roll it back up and then put it back. It's just hard. It is absolutely hard. And that one looked great on the outside and has more nibs and second cuts and little dollops in it. Then I would prefer people like that. I wanted a smooth yarn so that the two would work together and that's the problem. So, I mean, it's spinning up pretty nicely. I'm not gonna gripe. It's, it's usable yarn, um, but just not what I had planned. So, all right, I'm gonna get off of here. I've got some laundry to finish up. I gotta go to work tonight. Um, I actually wanna spin some more of that and get it done. Uh, yeah, other than that, I'm gonna get off here and say bye. And um, yeah, just so people know, okay, because there was a lot of confusion last year, okay? I don't put out when my birthday is, but if you are a constant watcher, my birthday is coming up the first part of February, and most years there's a big roping that takes place, but my birthday is on Thursday this week, this year, so maybe I'll have some time with RJ. Who knows? Maybe we'll try to podcast on, on my birthday. Um, but yeah, and I will be 51 for the record. Just say it. All right. Uh, but last year it was kind of funny and comical and RJ put it out there and said that I was horrible. And then we did a guessing game and yeah, so yeah, I'm 51. My birthday is coming up and no, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, last year because it was 50 um we did a giveaway i don't know what i'll do so if you have any ideas let me know all right i will see y'all next time bye